Even if you already possess the skill of walking and talking an entire match from bell to bell, there are six mistakes you can't afford to make, and we're breaking them all down next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. Go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below, or if you want to take your participation and support of Till We Make It to the next level, consider joining our community over on Patreon. There's a link down below in the descriptors. This week I posted up an exclusive video just for my patrons about the economy in professional wrestling no one seems to be talking about. And recently I've even uploaded footage from an in-ring seminar I taught all about submission holds. There's so much awaiting you over there and you can unlock it all including access to our private discord for as little as five bucks a month. Today I want to talk about some mistakes you cannot afford to make while communicating with your opponent in the ring. And in most countries, communicating in the ring is part of performing pro wrestling. But getting it right is a lot trickier than most people imagine. The first mistake you can't afford to make while communicating in the ring is calling more than three or four movements in advance. The human brain just isn't going to retain a gigantic string of movements the very first time that they are heard. Now, if you have the chance to go over them multiple times, well, maybe then you could get away with a longer string of movements. But at a maximum, you might be able to get away with drop down, leapfrog, duck the line, O'Connor roll. That to me seems like an acceptable string of movements to be calling on the fly while you are communicating in the ring. But if that morphed into drop down, leapfrog, duck the line, O'Connor roll, kick out, snatch the head, take over, head scissor, resorte, pin, I'll feed the left arm, grab the arm bar, work up to our feet, push to the corner, whip, reverse, monkey flip, I don't think anybody could possibly retain that number of movements on the fly. So try to restrict what you're calling to just the next three or four movements at a maximum. A pro tip for you. If you rely on calling things in the ring, I would practice calling through your teeth. That way, someone who's a very astute lip reader will struggle to pick up what is being said in the ring. And there definitely are fans out there looking for exactly that. They want to understand how the magic trick is being performed rather than appreciate the performance as it is presented. And it is our responsibility as professional wrestlers to mask that communication from the audience because it shatters the illusion of conflict. If we expect fans to suspend their disbelief while they are enjoying pro wrestling, we cannot shatter the illusion of conflict. And seeing two people talking in the ring does exactly that. So I would practice talking through your teeth. It's fun and awkward. The second mistake you can't afford to make while calling spots in the ring is thinking that your usual method and volume will work when performing with someone whose hearing is impaired. And that most common impairment in professional wrestling is this tiny little sensory deprivation tank, a mask. Now granted, a lot of wrestling masks do have ear ports, small openings by the ear. And some modern mask makers have started shifting toward putting mesh rather than thick material over the ears. Nevertheless, anything covering your ears does impair your hearing. In addition to which, I know a lot of wrestlers, including this guy, who don't have especially sharp hearing in the first place. That's why it's really important to place the call as close to your opponent's ear as you possibly can at any given moment. I've absolutely worked with professional wrestlers who've told me more than a foot away from their ear when they're wrestling masked 
All they hear is the equivalent of Charlie Brown's teacher. This next one might seem obvious, but stick with me. We're gonna flip the pancake over. I think it's a rookie mistake to try and call a spot once the crowd has quieted down. Do not make this mistake, but if you are in that exact situation, you just need to do something to pep the crowd up a little bit so that you're able to communicate without being heard. Most crowds are going to instantly react to one sharp, crisp chop that will wake them up and maybe buy you just enough time to make the call. If you are a heel, do a little bit of crowd work. See if you can't draw some heat out of the crowd and then, while they're creating the distraction for you, make the call. If you're a babyface, this is a fine time to see if you can't get the crowd to chant or stomp their feet or clap along and then use that as subterfuge. Only make the call once they've livened back up. Do not try to communicate while the crowd is quieting down. This next mistake contributes to more botches than anything else on my list today. Do not start running the ropes if the call isn't clear. If you've not heard the spot, if you don't understand every piece of it, don't just start running the ropes at a million miles an hour because you're only going to have a split second to try and figure out what is being telegraphed to you in that moment. And chances are you are either headed for a botched spot or in a worst case scenario, an injury. So if need be, shut it down before the running begins. If you're being back to the ropes and you don't understand what's being called, grab a hold of the ropes, snatch a hold on your opponent, make sure the call is clear before you take off for the ropes. I'll admit, this next one is for advanced players, but I think it warrants a mention here. It's a mistake to overlook an opportunity to call things in the ring in a foreign language. So if you happen to be on tour in Mexico, where the predominant language is Spanish, but the person you are performing with is fluent in English, you have an opportunity to call things in the ring in English, and this greatly reduces the likelihood of someone in the audience picking up on what's being said and understanding what you're communicating in the ring. Another pro tip for you. Keep in mind, wrestling is streamed globally these days, and most rings are miked. You know what I mean? There is a microphone dedicated just to picking up the sounds of the ring. So no matter where you happen to be performing, take care to call your spots when there is the minimum possible distance between you and your opponent. Because if you are shouting them across a distance, there's a really good chance the ring mic is going to pick up everything that you've said. This next mistake might be the most nuanced of them all, and it's one we could all afford to put a little work in on, including yours truly. We've got to develop the habit of feeding our backs to hard cam when we're calling a spot. And if you're hearing that wondering, Mike, why is that important? Well, you just need this insight to understand. Someone directing Pro Wrestling Live is constantly cutting back and forth between different camera angles, and the only fixed camera angle is that hard cam. The other camera operators are moving constantly, right? They're running from shot A to shot B, up the ring, down the apron, then they jump down again, whatever the case might be. So while they're moving from shot to shot, their camera might, for a moment, be on the floor or be on the ceiling until they get to shot B and refocus and frame the shot. That means, on the fly, a director will always default to the hard cam position because it's never on the floor, it's never on the ceiling, it's fixed on the ring. And the moment an astute director sees something going on in the ring that the home viewer isn't meant to see, they're gonna switch angles. Now what angle do they always default to? Hard cam. That's why we all need to get better at feeding our backs to hard cam while we're calling our spots in the ring. I wanna shout out my newest patron, Juan. Thanks so much. And if you wanna join our community over on Patreon, click on the link appearing right now. I think this is meant to look like a letter P inside an orange box, but to me, it just looks like a bunch of shapes. And if you're looking to keep on learning right now, 
click on this video about recognizing cues and bringing your match in on time.